Hi everyone, it's Dr. Barrett. I am here in Beverly Hills. I am a board certified plastic surgeon and I'm here to talk to you today about breast implants. I get a lot of questions about breast implants as I do a lot of breast augmentation surgery. And there are a couple key concepts to understand about breast implants. Let's start from the top. There is silicone or saline. Um, this is a saline implant and this is a silicone implant. The difference is what's inside. The gel that they make silicone implants out of is cohesive gel or gummy bear. All of them are gummy bear now. So a lot of people misinterpret gummy bear implants as being a certain type of silicone implant. But all the silicone implants now are cohesive or gummy bears. Let's talk about the advantages of saline versus silicone. Saline implant has saline inside and a lot of people feel that that's safer. However, the FDA and numerous organizations have done studies on silicone implants that have not found any link from silicone implants to causing problems such as autoimmune disorder or cancer. It just doesn't happen. The sad news is that one in six women get breast cancer, whether or not they have implants or not. So um, if you were my family member, I wouldn't hesitate to use silicone implants because they're more natural feeling um, and they look more natural. Let me show you why. On a saline implant, you can see these ripples on the edge. This is not very attractive for uh, the appearance of the breast. So especially if you don't have very much breast tissue to begin with, you won't be able to hide these ripplings and you'll see it on the side of the breast and you'll see it on the cleavage. The only real advantage to saline implants, in my opinion, is that their cost is a little bit less than silicone. But if you are going through breast augmentation surgery, you are taking the time off and you're spending all this money, why not spend a little bit more to get a better, more natural feeling and more natural looking implant? Let's take it another step, okay? Let's get saline out of the picture. We have textured versus smooth. All right, I know, I probably just blew your mind there, but textured has a texture on the outside of the implant. That's really important for me when I do revisions or lift because I want it to stay where I put it. And you're like, well, why don't you want it to, for primary augmentations? Why don't you want it to stay where you put it for primary augmentations? Well, primary augmentation, you're very tightened up underneath the muscle partially. So you want it to drop a little bit. If you're doing a lift, you want it to stay high. So uh, textured implants are great for lifts and they also reduce the rate of capsule contracture. So if I get a revision who has capsule contracture already, I like to use a textured implant to get less uh, risk of capsule contracture for coming back. Ultimately, the, what implant that you decide to go with depends on your consultation with your board certified plastic surgeon. I want to talk to you briefly, lastly, third step, about shaped implants. Everybody's talking about shaped implants. You can see this is a, this is a shaped silicone smooth implant. Now, at first, you're like, wow, Dr. Barrett, that looks like a breast more, has more fullness on the bottom, but the reality is, if you already have breast tissue to begin with, and trust me, I've used these a lot, but I found that they have problems. The bottom part of the shaped implant bows out the bottom part of a natural breast. So unless you have zero breast tissue to begin with, this is really not a great implant for you because you lose that upper pole fullness and you get this bowing out of the bottom of the breast. The most important thing, while they seem to make sense and because they look like breast tissue, uh, like a natural breast, they rotate, you guys. They have a 35% rotation rate. So if this rotates inside, it's not gonna look good. A round implant, if it rotates, unless it completely flips over, it's not a problem. These rotate any, any which way direction, you still get that upper pole fullness, and you get overall augmentation that's much more natural. Within these smooth round implants, we'll go in another level, okay? There are different profiles of implants. So have a look here, and have a look here. We have three different profiles right here in front of you. What does that mean? How much projection do we get versus width? The width of an implant matters in terms of the stability of the implant and the cleavage. The projection matters in terms of how far you want it to go out. You want the perfect combination. What I found is that low profile implants don't have enough projection. Think of grandma, okay? This is a flat breast, all right? Still great, nothing really wrong, but it tends to be on the wider side. Limited applications. You have high profile. A lot of people make the mistake and say, hey, if I have a higher profile implant, that must be better. Higher the better, right? No, absolutely not. Because when you get that higher projection, you are losing the width that's developing your cleavage. You are creating a lot of pressure on the downward part of your breast and can increase your risk of bottoming out. And in fact, most of my revisions that I end up doing are from high profile implants. 
So I'll tell you 95% of the time for my breast augmentation, primary augmentations, I use Moderate Profile Plus. So it's kind of in the middle, but just a little bit on the higher side for rejection. It's the perfect combination I found for the majority of my patients to give them that natural fuller look with the cleavage, great amount of projection, but not too much weight in the center of the breast to increase the rate of bottoming out. So that's it, you guys. It's Breast Implants 101. If you have any questions about breast implants or breast implant surgery, feel free to comment here on my YouTube page or ask your questions or check out my website for more information breastbybarrett.com. This is Dr. Barrett in Beverly Hills. You guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful.